Hello, y'all, and happy Sunday, y'all. So this video is going to be about narcissists and funerals. I've created the narcissists and funerals playlist. So this is about the aftermath of the funeral and looking back in hindsight. So this will kind of help you navigate with the catastrophes that go on after the funeral. So catastrophes that can go on after funerals is high debt, cost of the funeral, being restrained from relatives that are minors, not having access to your elders, loss of properties in some cases, physical fights, court battles, probate court, you name it. There's a lot of different things that can go on. Um, items being thrown in the garbage, furniture, homes being tore up because someone's left the dog in the house. No one went and got the dog after the person died. You might go over there and the dog's dead. God knows what. There's a lot of catastrophes that go on after the funeral. And this does not mean that the person that died is the narcissist. That narcissist, if the person that died was a narcissist, Unless they had some big money, they're not causing all the drama per se. It's the people, the narcissists that are still alive, right? So this kind of helped me. And I really thank the Lord that I have this channel because I sent a video to my cousin, right? And my cousin used this word. She said, this must be very therapeutic for you or your YouTube channel is therapeutic. And she's right. It is. And it made me think about it more because it's not fair y'all to kind of burden people with everything that's going on in our life. So it's a good place here for you too. This is therapeutic for you listening to the videos. And guess what? You might listen to this video and the next time you get a call saying someone passed away, you may remember this video and you have a heads up. You're one step ahead of things versus I'm walking through this and I'm learning as I go. Because this is actually the first time that I had a situation like this where there's this emotional attack towards myself and my family after the funeral. I never been to a funeral and some nutcases threaten my life, threaten to beat me down, won't let me talk to relatives that are minors that I should have access to, that the deceased person would want me to have access to. So this is the thing. You got to look at it this way. This will help you remain calm. And this is nothing against the deceased person. But remember what hoovering is. You're being sucked back in. So a lot of times what happens is before you got this call that your relative passed away or whomever passed away, whether they was a friend or whatever, but in this case, a relative, you were already in a no contact. So you were in protection. You were being protected. The Lord was protecting you. Now you got to know when it's time to come out of no contact. So if you love this person, you go pay your respects to the funeral. So I came out of no contact because I love this person deeply, right? However, I thought of this with the problems that I'm having after the funeral. And this is with more than one person. There's been all kind of chaos 
and not chaos that I'm creating. I'm dealing with narcissists, right? The deceased person was dealing with these same narcissists. So the deceased person no longer has to deal with this craziness no more, right? Or this madness or this situation, okay? The crazy situation. So keep this in mind. The reason it goes the way it goes, and there's this horrible stuff happening after the funeral, is because when you got that first call, whomever called you and told you that this deceased person is not here anymore, they've been killed, they died, they passed away of natural causes, whatever the situation is, that was a Hoover. Remember that, okay? You were Hoovered. But you don't think of a call saying that your loved one has been killed or died or passed away of natural causes. You don't consider that a Hoover, but that's what that is. So you were Hoovered. So you were sucked back in. Now you're being threatened. Now you can't see your loved ones. Now it's going into the legal realm. You were hoovered. However, sometimes it's a hoover that had to happen because there's some situations that you need to be more involved with. There may be some issues that you may need to solve for minors, right? It's, it's something that you're supposed to be doing in this situation. So going forward, I want you to look at it like this. Next time you get a call saying that someone's died, I want you to consider this. Number one, is this relative or you exchange relatives? Was there fighting and arguing? Was that relative that died, were they ever abusive towards you and were you abusive towards them? It could have been abuse on both sides, emotional abuse at a minimum, right? Another thing you need to consider, were you wanting to talk to the person that passed away and they refused because they were potentially on heavy drugs or alcohol? What was the circumstances? So if there was anything toxic about the situation, even if it's just that the person that passed away, the relative that passed away was going through a toxic period. See, sometimes it's just their toxicity that they're in. If these elements were going on from the moment you got that call, saying that they died, that's a Hoover. Okay, now, this is what I had to do and what I am doing. Now, since I look at it that way, I can do the things that I need to do to handle these legal circumstances. You know, and sometimes it's just go no contact. So you got options here. You can handle it legally or just go no contact. Get out of these people's life. In some cases, you may want to do it that way because none of these problems was going on when you was out of these people's life. You weren't being threatened. You weren't having people withheld from you. And the reason that was is because you were in no contact, okay? So because you was in no contact, you were not able to be abused by any of these narcissists or narcissistic people. Because these are not empaths, y'all. These people are not empaths. Empaths, we don't do stuff in that way. Right, we try to resolve it another way, especially uh, middle aged, older empaths, and things like that. So, 
how I'm navigating through this situation is, oh my goodness, I never viewed in my life, in my entire life, I never viewed someone calling and saying that this person died as a Hoover. Guess what? I'm going to tell you for sure how it's a Hoover. The narcissist didn't call and make the first call to me. The narcissist had someone else do it. And what do they call those? The narcissist helpers. They call them the flying monkey. I don't like that monkey word. Y'all. I don't know why. I just don't like the flying monkey. But that's the term that's used. The flying monkey. I call it the narcissist helpers. The narcissist infiltrators. The narcissist... Um, the people that the narcissist use to keep chaos going. Okay. So yeah, it's a Hoover. So for now on, once again, when you get calls that somebody died, y'all, remember advanced insight told you, uh oh, I'm being Hoovered. And that way you will know what the rest of the activities need to be. What's the agenda now? My suggestion is this. I'm going to recommend this. Since you realize you've been hoovered and you've been hoovered back into this stress, you've been threatened, you're just being emotionally abused by several people, right? They're out of town. So take a break from it. Back off and go back into no contact for a while. And then come up with a plan of what you need to do from there. Just back off from it. Go back into no contact. And the reason you want to do it this way for a while is so your stress level can return. Well, actually, I'll take that back. So your stress can stop. And so you can return to the state that you were in, the state of mind that you were in which is a good state of mind before you went to this funeral and then allow yourself to grieve and then figure out what's the best legal avenue to take, right? Figure that out. What's affordable for you? Is it worth it? What can you do? And things like that. But just back off, leave it alone. Just leave it alone because you were hoovered. And so what you did when you were hoovered, you came out of no contact. Of course you did. You're not going to miss your relative's funeral. You're not going to hold that against your relative because they were on drugs or they got killed. I mean, they can't help those circumstances. In my case, I even asked my relative, several years before they were killed to leave that state. This was my recommendation, but you can't make people want to say they own life. Every year was something going on. It was nothing good. No more good news. I said, well, why don't you leave that place? Stayed there. So at the end of the day, all of us got to die one day, right? So It's that person's time. We all have our own time to die. However, this is going to help you a lot. Looking at funerals different. And remember the examples I gave. Okay. And once you look at that as a Hoover and you got sucked back in. You took the whole family to the funeral and don't regret that. Okay. Because it's not the deceased person's fault that these people are doing these evil acts. And one reason they are doing it is because the person died, right? They, 
they're doing this because now they may feel like they have more power and control because the person that died cannot say, no, you know, I don't want you to do this or whatever. So that's just how it goes. But basically I got hoovered. I understand now I was hoovered. And that's why the situation happened. And another fact or way to know it's a Hoover for sure. When you got Hoovered, someone or some people, whether they be in the home or outside the home, advised you not to go. How many people that love you tell you or recommend, you know, you might want to not go to that funeral. They were warning you. That's a sign you were Hoover too. I had never been told in my entire life I should consider not going to this particular service. I went because for one, I love the individual so, so much and it was an immediate relative. So I did go. I went to pay my respects. That's just, that's how that empathetic side works. I mean, sometimes it don't matter what you tell me. If I feel enough love for that particular person, I'm going to do the right thing. However, I paid the price for it. Because I was hoovered, I got myself hurt and wrapped up in that situation. So there's still pain that came to me. I mean, pain to where I not only have to cry over my relative that passed away, I got to cry about what's being done to me by the narcissists that are still alive. Okay. So I hope this makes sense. I hope this helps you. I hope that for now on, when somebody passes, you consider and look at that as a being a potential Hoover. It may be a potential Hoover. Okay. That way, if you do have to go to the funeral, don't have expectations after the funeral. So just if you're Hoover and you go to the funeral, whether it be in the state you're in or out of state, it could even be out of the country, just go to the service, have no expectations outside of attending that service, speaking, helping in areas that you can with an obituary and things like that. That's it. Don't have any other expectations that you're going to be getting closer to grandkids, nieces and nephews, cousins. Y'all going to all sit and eat together. It's going to be happy. There's going to be some kind of great repast and y'all going to get to catch up and become one big happy family. You're never going to have that with a bunch of narcissists around. It just ain't possible. You cannot be a team with these people. You just can't do it. It just will not happen. So that's the way you got to look at it, okay? I'm Hoover. You're going to have a heads up because you get this video because I had to go through it, okay? And so you're going to not be hurt and wrapped up in this situation because you're just going to attend the service. No other expectations. Any other expectations that are going to happen that you have because you're dealing with narcissists, unfortunately, it's going to have to be done through the court system and lawyers. Okay. That's the only way you're going to get anything that you deserve for yourself, the children involved, the properties that you have, any other assets is going to be through your attorney. Because narcissists are not going to make it easy for you. They don't have an in them. It's not part of their makeup. They're too controlling. They're too... They're too not likely to adjust to change very well, especially change that benefits you and the children. They're not really fixed that way. They're, 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 they're fixed to 
not change and to keep the power and control. So if they think any of that power and control is going to be going into you because you're helping, because you want to help. That's all you want to do. You're empathetic. You want to help. But narcissists, they don't accept help. And one reason they don't want to accept the help is they want to have that title where they're able to judge the relationships you have with others too by withholding those relationships. So, okay, you want to be around the grandkids. They're going to say, well, you don't have the best relationship with the grandkids, but they won't give you the grandkids address to mail them things. They won't let you talk to the grandkids over the phone. They won't let you visit and go eat with the grandkids when you go to the state that the grandkids live in. They won't let the grandkids come to the state and visit you and enter your home. They won't allow any of these things. You can't write the grandkids a letter. You can't be social media friends with the grandkids. You can't do none of this stuff. But the narcissist is going to say, you don't have the best relationship with the grandkids. And it could be other family members like nieces, nephews, cousin, adopted relatives, you know, um, kids that you pretty much raised and it was not a legal adoption, but these kids understand that you raised them. I mean, it could be many different circumstances, but this is how it's going to go. Recognize you were Hoover. When you got that call, you were sucked back in. And that's why you're experiencing this hurt and pain. Now, since you look at it that way and I look at it that way, I'm back in no contact like I was. I wasn't dealing with these people, okay? And so I am going to do in my soul what the Lord would want me to do for the kids. But see, as empathetic people, when the Lord puts it on our heart to do something, we do fulfill those duties, but you just back off from it. Go back into no contact, heal, and then just go from there. And I'm sorry that you're going through this, okay? But I just want you to be one step ahead of it. You're not going to have to go through it like I did because you now know. Because see, you never want to look at Somebody calling you and saying somebody died is a Hoover. Because a lot of times you're not even looking at the person that died as a narcissist, right? So because you didn't consider that person a narcissist, even if they were narcissistic, I mean, or they're an empath, whatever their personality was, or a normal you don't think that way. I mean, you're you're too much in shock that the relative is even deceased. You still in shock that they killed. You know, you still in shock that a year before this relative got killed, another relative got killed. You see what I'm saying? Like every year somebody has been injured, killed, whether it be accidents on purpose, you know, it's just um, a horrible situation, you know, and it takes some time to grieve. So anyway, I love y'all so, so much. This is more on the narcissists and funerals. And now you know that that call was a Hoover. So you got sucked back in. You're going to go back into that no contact, take care of those legal issues later and leave that situation alone because you were just fine up until you got that call. That narcissist had that helper or that flying monkey to call to give you the news. And it ain't that person's fault. The helper is genuine. It's not, it's not that person's fault. Be grateful that they called you, right? However, the aftermath is painful and I want to help you with that by sharing my experience and doing this playlist, right? So please like, share, su subscribe, and please comment if you like. And again, please like, share, and subscribe. I've been on this exercise bike for 24 minutes now at least. 
Um, have a happy Sunday, y'all. Love y'all so, so much. Bye.